I'm C.R. Smith, and today I'm going to read a book, The Magical Tale of Alan O'Hare. On a warm sunny day, Alan sat neath a tree, as often he spent his time he found free, and he said, I am bored, that's the trouble with me, so he rose from his perch with his hand on his knee. And as Alan stood up, he said, I'm tired of resting. I'd rather spend time on adventurous questing. For up until now, my life has been plain. I've spent all my time in ways much too tame, and I simply cannot have more of the same. But what is a lonely young rabbit to do? Alan said to himself, I have not a clue. So he stood there, scratching his rabbit ear head, and he took a long pause before finally he said, A cave in the mountain, far off in the distance. I can get there, I bet, with no help or assistance. Surely adventure is there to be had, a great new adventure for this little lad. I can get there, I bet, in just over a day. I'll need a sleeping bag and tent to stay overnight, and a lantern for light, and perhaps I may just might need a rope to help me get over a slippery slope. Oh, and some food and some water indeed, a carrot, a plum, and a sunflower seed. Alan packed up his sack with supplies to be ready in case of any surprise. Then he made one last check with his keen rabbit eyes and began on his trek with the sun as it rise. I'm so excited, Alan said as he started to see all the lands that nobody has charted. And with all this excitement, Alan hit the ground running and he yelled out with glee, tell the world that I'm coming. As Alan walked on, he saw birds, he saw bees, he heard owls hooting their song through the trees. Then he picked up a flower, and he sniffed it and sneezed, and the flower flew off and away with the breeze. And Alan walked on as he whistled a song, till round about sundown the light was all gone. So he pitched up his tent, that lovable gent, and off to bed he by he went. The next day he awoke, too excited to stay in his tent, in his bag on the ground where he lay, for he just could not wait to be out on his way toward that cave in the mountain he'd get there today. Then before he knew it, he was already there at the base of the mountain looking up with a stare, and he knew he was close, so close he could taste it, so he raced up the mountain, there was no time to waste it. Up and up he hiked the trail, he hurried and scurried his tail up the trail, just as fast as he could. By now he was running, our blue little rabbit, impatient and cunning, soon found himself peering deep into the cave, and telling himself, I need to be brave. He peeked in his head and yelled out hello, then heard his own voice ring back and echo, and he said to himself, should I stay, should I go? If I stay out here, then I may never know what waits at the back of this cavern below. He took a step in, it was dank, it was dark. He took out his lantern and gave it a spark, which lit up the walls of this old dingy hollow, revealing a new path that now he could follow. The first thing he saw was bats upside down, before one bat woke up and fluttered around. That gave Alan a scare, so he let out a scream through the cold cavern air and ran a full sprint deeper into the lair. Deeper and deeper and deeper yet still, all this cavern exploring gave Alan a thrill. And he walked and he walked and explored on some more, till his ears were all droopy, his feet were quite sore, and his body was aching deep down to its core. After he walked for what felt like a day, Alan said to himself, there is simply no way I can go on any longer. My poor back is sore and I wish I was stronger. So he stood there a moment to quietly ponder if he should go back or go forward to wander. And that's when he saw it. It shimmered, it shined. A lamp he had never before seen of this kind. A lamp that was waiting for Alan to take. 
And as soon as he did, the earth started to shake And the walls of the crumbling cavern did quake I need to get out and out of here fast Or Alan O'Hare becomes a thing of the past So he smashed up the lamp and headed to safety Then, right in the nick of time, he was safely Outside in the sun, phew, what a close one Alan stated, then looked at the lamp and hesitated when he rubbed up the dirt, a hidden surprise, a genie was floating in front of his eyes. My name is Genie, Genie said with a smile. Unlimited wishes, and I grant them with style. Now tell me, young rabbit, what wish do you seek? What wish can I grant from on top of this peak? Hey, Genie, oh boy, Alan shouted with glee. Now what in the world do I want? Let me see. First take me home, I've walked quite enough. But make it a mansion that's filled with cool stuff. A mansion is good, but a castle is better. I want a gold watch that's the shiniest ever. A crown with some rubies, a throne for a chair, an elegant scepter. Wait, make it a pair. And that's not all. I want even more yet. I would not hesitate to bet that I could wish for more, more than ever I've had before. And what's more I wish for, a boat in my moat, a winter sleigh, and heavy coat, a hot air balloon, so I can float up high in the sky, and a plane that can fly. I want 12 pairs of sneakers, and 10 foot speakers, and 4 guitars, and 5 fast cars, and one of these, and one of those, and one of that too, I suppose. I want this, I want that, I want a red feathered hat, and a baseball and bat, and in addition, with your permission, lots of toys in mint condition, all in limited edition, and diamonds, and also rings, and more and more and more nice things. Then as Alan kept wishing, a pile grew high, a pile of stuff soaring into the sky, and he kept adding stuff, and more stuff, and more stuff, that he filled the whole valley, from mountain to bluff, and when one day that pile just happened to fall, who should be stuck at the base of it all? Why, Alan O'Hare, and he said to himself, this just isn't fair. Then Genie helped Alan from out of his pile, and Alan sat down, he moped for a while. Genie, I have all I ever could dream. Tell me then, Genie, why does it seem that I'm always alone? When I get to my house, there's nobody home. I thought having wishes would fill me with joy, and it did right at first. I really enjoyed, but now all I feel inside is a void. Then Genie asked Alan, what's wrong? Why is your bunny face so long? You have all the wishes your heart can desire, but I have the feeling to more you aspire. The truth is, Alan, you do need some stuff. But when is the time when enough is enough? Twelve pairs of sneakers when just one will do But what do you do with the other twenty-two? Happiness never came from a pile of stuff That soars in the sky one half mile It is known by sharing joy with others With sisters, nephews, and our brothers, friends And fathers, and our mothers, oh, and nieces too Simply just to name a few Alan, you could have all the stuff on this earth but with no one to share with, what would it be worth? Then Alan said, Genie, you're right. I have my health and my hearing and sight. I have food in my belly, a house in a hill. But something is missing that more stuff can't fill. And Alan got quiet. He realized just then that all he's been wanting in life was a friend. Genie, if I wish you free, we could be best buddies, you and me. But Alan, he said, you'd lose all your wishes, your plane and your boat and your fine china dishes. But Alan already decided he would wish Genie free from that place where he stood. Genie, I wish for you to be free. Then one second passed, and then two, and then three, and then four, and then five, and then Genie exclaimed, I feel so alive. Thanks, my friend Alan, for wishing me free. You're the first friendly face I ever did see. I have the feeling you'll be a true friend. And together they head toward adventure. The end.